welcome to the fourth show in our new season of Touring Texas Songwriters with our host, the long tall Texan, Mr. Bruno Michelle. Today's show features Central Texas songwriter Chris Hoff and is brought to you by the Barrel Brewing Company and the citizens of historic Salado, Texas. Chris Hoff was recorded live in front of a studio audience for broadcast on Country Radio Switzerland. Sit back, relax, and learn more about the life and songs of Chris Hoff. So here we have somebody that actually moved his family in 2017 from Nebraska to Texas, and that was a good decision. Not only that he got out of the cold, <laughs> but uh, we also get to enjoy his music, which I would consider is kind of a mix between neo-traditional and then add some outlaw wailing to it, and then you get Chris Hoff, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Yeah. Thank you all. all right. good. Thank you. Let's start with a song. Start with the song? Okay, this one's uh, called Don't Hate Me. Just Cause You Ain't Me. It's on my five-song EP I released earlier this year. Um, <clears throat> and I wrote this one just because it's, it's, it's uh, you know, it's 2019, and, and it doesn't matter what opinion you have of whatever you're, whatever you're trying to hold an opinion on. It's just somebody's got to hate you because, you know, they don't agree <laughs> with you. Right. So instead of being old school where, you know, you just agree to disagree, nowadays everybody just holds a grudge on you for ever for whatever reason so uh i wrote this song don't hate me just because you ain't me i ain't uh, nothing to you at all i just came here Trying to be somebody But somebody told me I didn't have far to fall Don't hate me Just because you ain't me Please don't judge me Based on what you see I'll do me if you do you, but we can both just let it be. Please don't hate me just because you ain't me. Me. 
Thank you. All right. So you played in a school band, a school choir, you sang in a school choir, and you were in sixth grade, I think, and then you started writing and playing a few years later. Yes. Um, and now you're enjoying your EP, It Doesn't Matter, which I completely disagree. It does matter. <laughs> But um, did you record any material before that, or is that your first take? You know, I I tried a few times back home up in Wyoming, Nebraska area, um, and we actually moved down here from Wyoming. We'd, we'd lived in Wyoming for, what, five years or so? And, um, you know, it's eastern. We call it Wild Nebraska because it's, you know, it's one community basically, and everybody gets together and does everything. All the farmers help each other out. So, I mean, that's uh, that's where I grew up. Um, to, <laughs> to answer to your question, yeah, I started sixth grade, started playing the trumpet, um, stuck with band and you know i started choir i think in seventh grade i think i can't remember um when i graduated i actually didn't realize that you know i loved music so much until after a couple years after i graduated you know i just felt like something was missing and uh i eventually you know i decided hey uh, maybe it's music and i went out and bought myself a guitar and kind of taught myself how to play i think the first song i learned how to play was Folsom prison blues you know mm -hmm. go figure <laughs> but uh um <coughs> Yeah, and the rest, you know, I took some lessons here and there and uh, um, just got, you know, slowly started mm -hmm. improving. Then I decided to start writing songs after a couple of years of just horsing around sure. with a guitar, you know. And Well, you haven't recorded anything before your EP? No, nope, the, the EP was first pretty one. much the first professional okay. recording yeah. I did, so. Now, you worked with uh, Mike Dorian and Merle Brigante on this project. Both of them were on that show with Sarah Pierce together. Um, yes. How, how the hell did you get to know these guys? I mean, well, coming down from that's, Wyoming. Then. <laughs> that's a funny story. Um <laughs> so one of my acquaintances back home in Wyoming had told me that I needed to do something with my music. Um and we we was playing at this place called the Stampede in Chugwater, Chug Chugwater, Wyoming, excuse me. <laughs> and uh it's basically, you know, you sneeze and and you miss it going by on the interstate and um There, there's a little bar there, bar restaurant. It's an eatery, and um, they have this open jam night on Thursdays or something like that. And I met a guy who toured, did the Texas tour. You know, he was a country western singer, and he went from Wyoming down around here and played all over the place. And he, you know, had some acquaintances. So when I told him I was moving, he's like, "You need to get a hold of Chris Wall." And I did, and Chris Wall sent me to Merle Bergante, and, you know, the rest of it's pretty much history. It's true, yeah. there, that's so. how it goes. <laughs> All right. That guy wasn't by chance Brent Moyer, right? No. Okay, good. It was... Um, <laughs> we'll get that out of the way. <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't him. Because he's an old buddy of mine. Um, yeah, let's play another one, then. Go another ahead. one? Okay. Uh, let's do down. Okay. This one's also on the EP here, so. Heading back from somewhere you never should have been. Lipstick on his neck and his breath was lit with gin. When the sun goes down, when the sun goes down. Did not have a wife She passed long ago She loved the way it smelled White powder on her nose When the sun goes down When the sun goes down When the sun goes down Everybody knows When the sun goes down You best get home Like to drive 
rabbit fast Fifty years old and he knew it wouldn't last When the sun goes down Everybody knows When the sun goes down You best get that you mentioned that uh, you first got in touch with Chris Wall, it became logic to me because otherwise I wouldn't even have asked my first question <laughs> because I know Chris since the 90s. Yeah. And uh, Merle was actually the guy who brought Chris over to Switzerland way back in, in the okay. late 80s, early 90s when he was so. still doing that, promoting. So. so it was quite natural that you meet Merle right. back <laughs> once you hooked up with Chris. So Did I you get to know him in Wyoming or... No, no. Uh, one of my friends from Wyoming had known Chris Wall mm -hmm. from touring. But he hangs out in Wyoming quite often, too, in yeah, Colorado I, and everywhere. I, did, I never did meet him up in okay. Wyoming or in Colorado or anything. Yeah. Uh, Kip Attaway was one of my friends that mm -hmm. I was talking about. Okay. and um, um, It wasn't him <laughs> who who told me to talk to Chris Wall. It was... Um, who? No, it wasn't Brady. <laughs> His name escapes me for right now. Somebody did anyway. It was a good decision <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah. Chris is a long time in the yes. business and he knows people, so that's good. For sure. Now, I think your style of music does matter. Contrary to what Merle suggested as the title for your first EP, I think it was his idea to call that thing It Doesn't Matter. It was. Uh, yes. Why the hell did you listen to him? I mean, <laughs> Well, because I have a song and, it, and, it's, and the name of the song is Free yep. Yep. on that EP and and the most vamping lyric in there is it doesn't matter right and that's where you know merle come up with the idea like oh, well, we should just call it it doesn't matter i'm like hey, that's a good one <laughs> <laughs> so for people who don't know you actually it should matter <laughs> right right <laughs> why would i buy this it doesn't matter okay, put <laughs> <one>. <laughs> all, right. <coughs> all right so that's how the name got that <laughs> there's a story behind everything now your songs are what I would call neo-traditional, but I can't help to hear some wailing in it because you sent me the songs and we had them on the radio already. Yeah. And uh, the reaction was pretty good. And a lot of people hear some wailing. Was he one of your heroes? or And if yes, were there any others that you tried to kind of oh, get yeah, influenced I'm, by? Waylon, for sure, is probably my my biggest idol. I, I, I idolize him the most. Um, just his backstory on you know how nashville tried to starve him out mm. and anybody knows anything about whaling you know he was a guy who had uh, a million chances to just soar and somebody else would always ruin that for him you know and 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 also you know he'd get down on himself about you know the the day the music died and buddy holly and the whole plane crash right. with the whole joke that those two had um uh he was definitely one of the biggest influences uh just because, you know, he basically took a whole system of what Nashville was doing and said, no, I'm going to do it this way mm -hmm. and watch me do it, you know, try to starve me out now. And so, he did. Yeah, 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 and he did it. So <laughs> him for sure, you know, Chris Ledoux, mm -hmm. the Wyoming native. Absolutely. Um, he's one of my big 
idols, you know, Johnny Cash, all them guys, uh, modern guys that I really look up to, like Cody Jinks, uh, Sturgill mm-hmm. Simpson, Tyler Childers, um, Whitey Morgan in the 78s, you know, they're they're all just killer. Like, of, they're trying to keep the old school sound alive. A lot of good really stuff really coming good. out of Texas, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. And now you're here too, so there's <laughs> even more stuff coming out right. of Texas, so let's play another one. Okay. Um Stu likes the song. Alright. This one I uh I really wanted a song that that would remind everybody of all the songs that you love. <laughs> and so this song took me the longest to write, merely because uh trying to make everything make sense. And you figure it out, as as most song lovers do, um, what I did with this one. And and come to find out when I come to, to do copyright, it was perfectly okay to do what I did. So <laughs> I was happy. This one's called Life's a Song. Tuesday's long gone like a dust in the wind well, Out in Lukem by Texas with a few rowdy friends May that whiskey river never run dry In this small town Saturday night well, There's a lonesome whistle blowing And it won't back down Stuck in low dive again well, There's a one horse town Just taking it easy on a tequila sunrise After fishing in the dark, stuck on toes of time That wagon wheel goes round like it's painted black Amarillo by morning always takes me back To that sweet home Alabama on that lost highway And I don't really think I ain't done it this way Sunday morning coming down Yeah, and who'll stop the rain In this little guitar town There's a party tonight At the Cadillac Ranch That's where friends in low places always go to dance I got lost on that old copperhead road Yeah, with Poncho and Lefty I got stuck out in the cold
her blue eyes crying every time that it rains. It's a ride in the spotlights that drive me insane. That wagon wheel goes round like it's painted black. Amarillo by morning always takes me back. To that sweet home Alabama on that lost highway. And I don't really think I ain't done it this way. No, I don't really think I ain't done it. Thank you. Thank you. Took you a long time to get all those song titles together and kind of merge them make in the it right sense. sequence, yes, it right? It took me. That's, that song by far took me the longest. What brought you to that idea? I mean, there were several songs, obviously, that did that in the past in a different yeah. way, but what right. brought you to that idea? Well, like, I, I just wanted to try to take a... a I wanted to challenge myself and... and See if I could actually do a, an entire song made up of nothing but song, song titles. titles. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. and and yeah, lo and behold, I guess I did. <laughs> <laughs> you did yeah. Minus a few fill words there and there, but I mean everything else was just Turned nothing out pretty good. but song titles. So. Hard to remember though, the old song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, it wasn't just strictly the country side of me influence either. You know, it was rock well, you and got roll painted too. painted black and, from stones in there yeah. and all that, all that stuff. So that's pretty cool. Now, it sounds like complicated feelings have a happy sound, but rather somber oh, yeah. lyrics. So um, when you write songs, what comes to you first, the, the melody or the lyrics? Hmm. Um, that kind of depends. Like a song like Down, you know, the one that has the, the cool groove to it, the, f the first thing that come to me was the groove. Mm -hmm. And then trying to put lyrics on top of that was, was it, it was... It was hard at first, and then when the lyrics started coming, it just you know I just let them roll off my back. And that song was like a ten minute song, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, because I really didn't have to try to make it make sense. It just made sense on its own. You didn't have this cool little groove that was kind of dark and dirty and had a secret to keep, you know. So you just kind of think of lyrics that mm -hmm. way, you know. And then other times, you know, I'll just start out with write, like writing a uh, a song poetically, just no no chords or nothing to it, and then add everything to mm -hmm. it later. And so then basically a lot of times it's mm -hmm. you know I go, I write and I play and I write and I play and I write and I play and just do it you know back and forth and just go over the same part over and over again until I get another line. Is one of the two easier or no after your <sighs> writing experience? No, not really. I just try not to force myself to do anything. You know, I know when it's my time to go in, and I know when it's time to you know to play. Um, I uh, I just I just I just have that sixth sense where it's like okay, well, it's, I'm in a songwriting mood, so let's go write a song, you know. Mm -hmm. And I don't I don't try to force anything. Right. Either. When I force something, you know, it's never a good. It usually <laughs> doesn't work. <laughs> never a good one. Now, which of your self penned songs are you particularly proud of, and why? I don't know. Um, probably. I don't know. <laughs> That's a hard <laughs> question. Don't Hate Me, I think, is my favorite. Mm -hmm. But everybody's favorite is Down. And so that one grew on me quite a bit. Because um, of the reaction from yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just because of reaction-wise. I mean, as far as lyrically and, and musically put together, I would say Don't, don't Hate Me mm -hmm. is my favorite. But no, so absolutely. Far, I mean of the All stuff right. that's been out. So. Now, we were talking about uh, complicated feelings, and then I think you were talking about another one, which just slipped my memory free free i think was it that free? was it so which ones of those you would you like to play or do you have them on the set list anyway then yeah i got <laughs> i got them on the set list yeah i can do um i can do one of them <laughs> for sure um i think we'll do um complicated feelings yeah, all right with that one uh, <laughs> you you. oh man yeah <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I got it. I'm winging it. I don't think I have a cheat sheet for that one. You don't have a okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me. I'll do. 
We're free. We're free. We got free? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to add that one, though. I don't know how that <laughs> You guys want to be alone and work this out later? Yeah, please. <laughs> I, thought I, was, I thought I was totally prepared for that, but I guess I wasn't. <laughs> Who's the boss? He calls the shots. And he just says, what to do, I'll do it. You can't paint the sky, especially when it's already black. Sit there and wait to die someday of a heart attack. Jeopardize what you realize could have been something good. You might just recognize the things for which we stood. I won't let you take me down or give me the run around. You'll be six feet in the ground the day I leave this town Well, it wouldn't be for nothing, no, at least I'd have some peace Someday I'll have something and I won't have to beg or plead I won't let you push me around Get me down I won't let you Make me bleed Someday you just might see You'd be better off to leave me be Just go on and go Things you done, can't you see, just brought me down every day Well, I stand alone and hang around just hoping for something new Same old song, same old sound, still hoping to find some truth Two strangers dance across the floor just hoping for something more There's things I hide behind closed doors And me, I'm here to settle school Well, you can run and you can hide But someday we'll cross past again Don't just sit there and feed me lies Pretend like we could be friends I won't let you push me around I won't let you get me down I won't let you make me bleed Someday you just might see Oh, someday you just might see Complicated feeling Thank you. Now, you're getting increased attention from radio stations down here in Texas. Uh, what's your ultimate goal in the business? I mean, except becoming a superstar selling 40 million <laughs> records or whatever. Well, you know, <laughs> wouldn't we all like to be in that, in that, in that boat? Um, I think my ultimate goal is just to be able to do something I love to do other than my day job uh, and, and just make some money, enough to live and, and be happy and and uh, you know it's just the american dream you know i just want to do something i love to do and 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 still be able to provide for my family and take care of everything you know pay the bills and that's all i want mm-hmm. really um deep down my other goal is to you know keep traditional country alive and well and 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 not let it die out mm-hmm. like the industry is trying to you know some parts of the industry are trying to start yeah, absolutely it and we thank you for that by the way <laughs> this is really important and, these days and the other day you know the hard part of that is is we live in such a modern society where you know the younger crowd especially they get so bored so quickly that you cannot release enough songs to keep everybody happy you know like back in when you guys were all younger 
I'm not trying to. <laughs> <laughs> not trying well, to. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it took. Sometimes it took a. That was a Chris Hoff, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it took a. What I'm trying to say is, sometimes you know, back a, a long right. before I existed, mm -hmm. it took you know, a good two years to put out a good album. Right. Absolutely. And and that was because you know they had to mm -hmm. go tour and make some money enough to do another album and you know and and write songs mm -hmm. and all that. But now it's like. If you're not coming out with a new song every three or four months, you know mm. you're old news. Yeah. yeah, true. And it well, for one part you're right. On the other hand, in the '60s, like you had these old guys. Yeah, <laughs> some of them already passed away, uh, like George Jones and stuff. They they put out two or three a year, but it was more or less the label deciding we need to put out some more stuff. So that right. pressure was always there, but it's from the marketing and the business side. Right. And I think here in Texas, at least from my experience knowing the guys already when we were over in switzerland and now since 13 years down here it's more about the music like you said do what makes you happy and if money comes along with that that's fine but right. it's not the prime goal and these days uh, a little up north mm -hmm. Not yeah. saying where. Yeah. Uh, it's basically just about marketing and, and selling whatever they call. I mean, look at what's uh, Billboard number one right now. Right. Uh, I have no idea what that should be. Yeah. But I it is. <laughs> and it's making millions. Yeah. And yeah. Ray Price, I was uh, one of the guys who had the pleasure to interview him a few months before he passed. He told me, <laughs> Mac Abernathy, another guy that was here on the show, confirmed that Ray Price uh, described CMA as country my ass. Yeah. And that's what it is today, <laughs> even though I'm a member of the CMA, but it's getting weirder and weirder. Right. People come up like, I call them three CD acts, you know, the first, the last, and the Christmas album done. Yeah. It's amazing. And there's so much good talent, like you, you mentioned Wayland, there's tons of other ones that get dropped. And here in Texas, you can probably do that the way you want. And yeah, there's there's a lot of freedom here. I mean, I never even once considered Nashville at all, you know, as a place to move because I'm, I would never, I would never survive there because, uh, I'm just too old school. Number one, <laughs> <laughs> number two, uh, yeah, my my version of country just doesn't match. So I mean, I just I can't. And I don't think I'm pretty enough either. <laughs> Different one. You got to be pretty to be there now. And then every now and then somebody pops up and still has success over there with that style of yeah. music, like Midland. Yeah, well, yeah. very true. It's yeah, well, they started here. A good here, example. So, I mean, they started here too. They just you know? kind of got yeah. adopted up there. Right. You know, so. But it's amazing that they even get adopted up there these days. Yeah, there's right? an opportunity for it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> there's people like Eric Church who, for the most part, got to do what they wanted to do. Yep. So there's exceptions that they make, but for the most part, you know. It's not it's, happening it's, anymore. It's, it's, yeah, That's why people come back, Randy Rogers came back, Way Bowen, and tons gotta, of, tons of Texas guys. Yeah. Do what makes you happy. I mean, don't don't ever fold, you know. Absolutely. You hold your own card. Don't let somebody hold the cards for you. Yeah, don't ever fold. So that what, be another song title, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> What, so what brought you, What can I ask a couple of Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> of course. What brought you to America? I mean, well, we, we knew a lot of the Texas music guys from Switzerland. We were in the like music business over there, doing interviews, uh, doing a lot of shows and stuff. And we knew, the first guy we probably knew from Texas was Gary P. Numb back in the late 70s. Okay. An old friend of ours and his wife, Swiss. So. Uh, then we had people like Dale Watson who played over there 10,000 oh, yeah. times. I brought two tons of steel over there the first oh, time cool. about 15 years ago when we saw them in Dallas and we had contacts, so we got them into festivals and things. So when it came to like semi retirement, the first idea was, eh, hey, you know, a lot of guys here, so why not move down here? Right. That's now cool. we know we actually get to see them pretty much every day, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the good thing. Is it, is it, is it is America totally different than Switzerland? I mean, just well, it depends on, on how you look at it. You know, on one hand, they used to have advantage technology-wise and stuff here mm -hmm. over Europe, and they lost that completely because these days I consider like look at internet ser services. I consider this a third <laughs> world country. Yeah, obviously, if you're not living in town, right. And we don't, so I know what I'm talking yeah, about right, out right. there. <laughs> I have more speed on my damn <laughs> dial-up <laughs> modem than we have out there. <laughs> uh, on the other hand, uh, the people here, I, I don't consider Texas to be America because it's not, not really, like, typical. Right. It's a different thing, you know. In Texas, people are kind of open. It's, it's more like if you're out in the country in, in Arizona and Wyoming, it's the same thing there. 
Right. But I could never live in a big city, for example. Right. People are too too hectic, too nervous, too whatever. Argues so it, up, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Had a hard time adjusting. People are definitely more open here, but they're also more kind of superficial in some areas. So if you have a friend and you're being called a friend pretty quick, then it depends once you have some bad days, then you see who the real friends are. Right. And I bet they're less than what you thought you had before. Right. So... Uh, what's also a big advantage here uh, is cost of living is massively lower. I mean, yeah. Switzerland is going crazy price-wise. Right. So whenever you play over there, make sure you get a big wallet or a big <laughs> deal that they pay for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Absolutely. That's good things to know. <laughs> yeah, whenever. We have still some contacts over there, but um, the thing is the, the country part in Switzerland was big like in the 80s. And then it kind of disappeared, and now it's coming back. And what's really big up there is, is stand line dancing and square dancing and all that stuff, and that gets the musician to gigs. So festivals come and go. Some are there for 25 years. Some yeah. are just disappearing after a few years. But there's still a bunch of options, of, uh, opportunities to play over there for sure. Cool. Yeah. Right. Can we switch the roles again, please? Yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> now, now, let's play a song first, because otherwise we wait. you still get about 40, right? <laughs> well, I'm going to do a, a cover song that's also my EP. Um, and I, in, in future, I'm, I'm going to do a couple more covers on EPs and albums. Um, what I like to do is just pick them all apart and make it my version. Um whether that's better or worse I, you know i just feel like if you're gonna do a cover song you either gotta do it just like they did it or make it or your bring own something else yeah. and mm -hmm. so you know I, I love the song i'm on fire by bruce springsteen and and uh i just didn't really like the way he did it you know i do i love I, I, i'm full of i'm full of he doesn't care he made the money already right, yeah yeah and you know i mean you know I gotta, I gotta pay him for the royalties too so um um <laughs> I uh I loved his version of the song. It's just I think I had a totally different spin on it. Mm -hmm. And I've heard, you know, quite a few other versions and I think what I did is I just kind of meshed everything I've heard in the past and then threw my own twist on it. Okay. Um so I guess this is yeah, more hear. or less my version, not quite on the EP cuz I don't have a full <laughs> band, but you know, <laughs> close enough. <laughs> Someone took a knife, baby, a jean, dole, and 
six inch valley through the middle of my soul. Oh, at night I wake up with the sheets soaking wet and a freight train running through the middle of my head and you. You cool my desire. Oh, I'm on fire. Oh, I'm on fire. Oh, girl, I'm on. Talk about being on fire. Your day job has to do a lot with with heat, you know? <laughs> so oh, yeah. you're you're actually welding things and you're you're repairing stuff. So have you ever thought of kind of quitting that day job and concentrate full speed on music, or um, is that somewhere <laughs> every day? Every day, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, every day. Um, just just uh, uh, financially, I can't really afford to do that, you know, right now. Um, and that's okay. I mean, uh, uh, you know, if I could just once I get to that just that next little level, I think I could I'd be okay. You know, to just quit my day job and go out and tour and do my thing. It's just getting to that next level. I mean, there's that next level's that far away, but I mean, I got to climb a mountain that's the size of Mount Everest to get there. You know what I mean? It's just. Um, how, however, I'm very fortunate for for the run-ins and then the people I've met and and you know, all the blessings that I've had so far since moving to Texas. I mean, I feel like I've gone leaps and bounds from where I was back home. And, you know, I really, when I was young and more naive, I <laughs> I thought, you know, oh, yeah, I can be a cool, you know, country guy from, from Wyoming and everybody's going to love me. And, you know, there's just not enough resources for you to get out and do what you need to do and, you know, uh, or places to play. I mean, mm. you know, it's just, it's, I love it back home. Don't get me wrong. It's just not a place for a musician to want to like succeed. And there are some that do and my hats off to them. You know, they, they, do, do. they really kicked some major butt to get there. Mm-hmm. Well, even Chris Ledoux had to get out of Wyoming yeah. in order to get, you know, recognized yeah. internationally. Right. And, and here you obviously have tons of venues, even though they're disappearing like around Austin. It's pretty sad because the, the rent and everything is just killing the, 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 end, yeah. the, the venues. And but there's still a ton of it, and obviously there is also a ton of musicians. So your competition is pretty high. What tr- what do you try to do in order to kind of get yourself ahead of the competition? In like with your experience, co- the younger guys, young, you hear that, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, not not the big guys, you know, just the, your league. How do you try to set you apart here? I don't know. Uh just try to be myself, I guess, and and um, just keep on driving. I mean, you know, uh, I don't really look at it a competition. You know, a lot of people have that word competition stuck in their head as a musician, and, you know, they think that you're out there competing against them, and, you know, I guess in some ways you are, but I don't feel like it's a competition to me. You know, I don't, like, I can't stand award shows and stuff like that. I just don't feel like you can, you know, how do you, how do you, you know, take two great artists and figure out who's the best. Like, 
you know, in each way, they're they're all just as good. You know, it just depends on who their listeners are. Absolutely. And I guess, you know, if you're going to, you know, write music for the pop scene, you know, then I guess you can have your award show. But, I mean, if you're writing music for yourself and you have your local, your loyal fans who just love you, to me, that's worth all the weight and gold. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's worth more than any trophy. I just I, I don't I, I don't like to. <laughs> I hate to go on and on and on. I just don't. I don't like competition. Yeah. You know, the no, word competition true. is because I don't true. ever come across to try to be a, a threat to somebody. Mm-hmm. Like, oh yeah, I'm, you know, yeah, you're easy to follow. You know, like yeah. that's not me. I just. <laughs> uh, yeah. Absolutely, and then the other thing is that's that's actually what we like about Texas music guys. You know, they're like a big family. It doesn't matter who meets who or right like. We had several cases where band equipment got stolen or, or they had an accident on the road and within like five, six hours they had they had replacements from, from their peers. Right. And could play the gig in the evening. So that's something I think it's pretty unique down here. That yeah. Very people true. really stick together. Like yeah. To. And that's always a good thing to have. Absolutely. All right. So you came to the right place. Hi. Good yeah. thing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let's have another one. Uh, this one's called uh, She Blew My Mind. Um, I really don't have a backstory. <laughs> I just had some. Just, <laughs> just, yeah. You had your mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> That's my backstory. The mind's gone. Backstory. It's blown. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's gone. I just don't, I don't have a backstory no more. I think I just come up with a couple of the, a couple of the lines and built the song off of that, and it was one of them jobs where, you know, it took you 10 minutes, so it must have been okay, you know, just, just. <laughs> Roll through it. (laughs) (coughs) Well, I woke up this morning I had to rub my eyes I found it hard to believe That I didn't die I don't quite know Just what I was thinking but I know She blew my mind She blows my mind Every time We get to drink I'm feeling right I don't know If she lives come back but I know she blows my mind be the last Cause I never know When she'll bring up my past but She'll come and knock in Right in time And I already know Yes I know She's gonna blow my mind She blows my mind Every time we get to drink, feeling right, I don't know if she'll ever come back, but I know she blows my mind.
started thinking about her and me. And it finally sank in enough for me to see that I just can't think about all the time. All the times, all the time, she blows my mind. She blows my mind every time we get to think and feeling right. And I don't know if she'll ever come back. But I know she blows my mind. And I don't know if she'll ever come back. But I know she blows my mind. Yeah. Thank you. Her mind is already blown. She's sleeping all the time. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a lullaby, that. <laughs> now, what is the one thing that you would like people to know that they never guess about you? I'm not as much as an asshole as I look like I am. <laughs> <laughs> I get that all the time. You look like such an a-hole. <laughs> I'm not, though. I'm just, I'm just down to earth. I mean... It's just me, right? <laughs> yes, I don't. I was that. I, I don't know if that was the prop, the proper answer to that question. <laughs> the first thing was, that came to my head. was an honest so, answer. Yeah. So, all oh, good. Now, before we get to the next song, and my last question, uh, let me ask with these guys, as we usually do, if they have any questions for you. Anybody? You miss Wyoming? <sighs> yeah, I, I really miss the. I miss the people there. I mean, and I miss the just the laid back. There was hardly any people. There's 575,000 people in the whole state of Wyoming. So, I mean, moving <laughs> to Austin for me was a total culture shock. I mean, it, uh, I've never seen so much, you know, BS in my life. There's just way too many people here. But that's, you know, I'm adjusting. And the heat here just really got to me, too, for the first couple of years. I think this year I finally figured out that it's never going to change. So the, the humidity is actually really what gets me down i mean i can do the heat but the, the 65 80 percent humidity that's what kills me <laughs> why, so why austin that. and not just the hill country or something like a little bit out well, well you know with my job i kind of have to be somewhere where there's an actual railroad around so i mean you know, <coughs> can't really live 60 miles of commute for here is just back home it was nothing to live far away from work and drive because mm -hmm. there was no traffic <laughs> so here you know if you live the further out you live the, the higher the chances that well there's an accident and you get tied up and mm -hmm. you can't get to work on time so you know i mean that's why okay. it's stuck with here so any other questions what kind of beard oil do you use uh usually just uh um coconut oil interesting that's it. <laughs> you, you want to grow it more? Well, I just, I just trimmed it down. <laughs> <laughs> when I grow it, I need something to... Right. Tame it down. Hold it back. Yeah. yeah, now you got another year. You know, Santa's coming Sorry, in. Here. Siri? <laughs> she thought she was talking to you. She said she, she heard beard oil. She was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Did <she say> coconut oil? <laughs> All right, let's play another one before we get to my last question. Then okay. we have the final song, and then well, that's it. Well, I, uh, hopefully this one isn't too bad, because I just literally just wrote it. Y'all are going to be the very first people to hear it. I think the only two people that's heard it is just Lucas and my wife. So. Okay. Uh, I've heard it once. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard it once. <laughs> uh, well, if you see me down and out... At the honky tonk tonight Don't bother asking me questions While I'm under this neon light Just let me sit here by myself With this whiskey and 
this glass Until this damned old heartache Becomes a thing of the past Heartaches and women Seem to go hand in hand I can't have one without the other No, I've had all I could stand But the whiskey doesn't drown Just keeps on pulling me down The heartaches and women And that new Nashville sound Glass. I'm thinking this might be the end Cause I ain't been to honky tonks Looking for my best friend She ain't here tonight I guess she's found a new neon light I'll be sitting here Just down and out here tonight Heartaches and women seem to go hand in hand I can't have one without the other I've had all I stand But the whiskey doesn't drown Just keeps on dragging me down Heartaches and women and that new Thank you. Hopefully your ears ain't bleeding too bad after that one. Good, good one on the next album. Pretty good. Yeah. I will hope so. Last question, basically. What would you ask yourself in an interview that I did not? Man, that's a tough one. <laughs> what would you ask yourself in an interview? <laughs> Why are you so good looking? <laughs> I don't know, something like that. <laughs> Why are you really, really good looking? <laughs> Maybe something like that. <coughs> Man, uh, I don't know. Has you there ever what? been anybody that couldn't answer that question? <laughs> yeah, sometimes, sometimes not. It depends, you know. Trout fishing in America. Had sometimes a, people <laughs> don't think about themselves. Uh, with uh, like what they would be doing if they weren't playing music. Oh yeah, or if they, I guess if you can no, really—he he does. If, if you do, he's got a job when he's not playing music. What so. would you do if you could pick a job besides music? If I had to pick a job besides music, not the one you have, obviously. Not the one I have, <laughs> right? I—I <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a simple-minded guy, I guess. Matt, yeah. you know. Probably like working a forge or something like that, you know, just doing like a, a metal work, which is still it's similar to what I do, but um, mm -hmm. nothing like what I do now. You know, just to, to like maybe turn like uh, pull art, things. yeah, artistic yeah. into mm -hmm. you know, like right. uh, that'd be fun. I really like to just take my cool. time and and work on something for hours and hours and just you know yeah. see what I can come up with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just turn something in from an iron ingot to you know something beautiful. Yeah. That would be cool. Right. All right. Good enough, so let's get to the final song. And oh, the final song, okay. Thanks for being here. Thank you. This one is going to be my next single. It's called The Good Reason to Blame. They call me an outlaw Like they don't know my name Wish they knew the 
reason why I've have gone insane living life on the edge it ain't really my thing but when push comes to shove girl I'm the first one they blame and they'll find a good reason to blame it all on me you know they call me a heathen I just wish they could see that deep down inside me it ain't nothing but good if they let that light shine it'll glow like it should Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. You. 